We're talking about settlement agreements. Now as an employee, a settlement agreement uh, will look something like probably a deed of settlement and release. Because this is because you and your employer have come to an agreement to most likely end your employment and they are going to want to be released from legal liability um, for that. Um, agreement. Now other settlement agreements might be an agreement for you to go from casual to contractor or from permanent employment to casual or permanent employment to contractor and that's when there is a major change in your working conditions and I would encourage you and your employer to come to a written agreement that this is something that you've both decided to do. What that does is it gives you the satisfaction that you've got that agreement in writing and that you know what's happening with that agreement and it gives your employer that uh, comfort that this is agreed by you and you're not going to try and sue them later because you've made this agreement for, with them. Now have you been presented with a settlement agreement? Now it could be that you and your employer have been communicating about something and the, now you've come to an agreement. And what wasn't considered during that time was whether you were going to sign an agreement or not. And someone has gone, oh, here's the agreement we want you to sign in relation to this, uh, this um, negotiation we've just, we've just completed. And you've gone, well, hang on here, um, what's this all about? Now, just remember that deeds of settlement and release will normally contain a few things. It will first contain the deal, whatever the agreement was. It will also contain uh, a confidentiality clause in it which says that the deal um, and how you came to it remains confidential. It is also likely is going to have some sort of non-denigration clause in it and it's going to have a clause that releases the parties um, from legal liability in some way. So some people say, oh, I'm not, you know, they want a gag clause, I'm not going to sign that. Well, it's absolutely a matter for you whether you do or not, but confidentiality is part of the agreement. It's a normal part of the agreement. And you can imagine that your employer, if you've signed a, a, an agreement to end your employment, that they're going to want a, a, a level of confidentiality around that. So it's not unusual for them to request it. Now, what are your legal options? Well, you can sign or not, as the case may be. But if you choose not to sign and the agreement has been subject to you signing this agreement, then this, this deed of settlement and release, for instance, then the whole agreement might just fall over. Uh, if indeed you haven't discussed it to date and they're asking you to sign it, then there's going to be some complexity there. If you don't sign and you're going to continue employment with this person, with this business, then there might be some issues with how you and your employer are going to interact later, whether there's going to be some tension between yourself and the employer. Uh, but just remember that if you choose to exercise a workplace right, your employer um, is cannot lawfully um, adversely treat you because of that exercise and we can and we'll talk about that in a different environment in general protections provisions. Um, now if you do choose to sign you can ask someone like myself to review that agreement first and provide you some advice about it um, and if you don't choose to sign then of course there might be some issues there with having the agreement um, actually come to fruition. Now, can you make a counter offer? Now, this is a question that comes up if your employers asked you to sign a deed of settlement and release as part of perhaps an exit negotiation or as part of negotiations from the going from permanent employee to contractor, for example. And yes, you can absolutely negotiate at this point. Um, remember, all contracts or deeds are just an agreement between two parties with the intention to be legally binding. So you, for that to happen, both parties need to agree. So there, there can be some to and fro in there in terms of what you're willing to accept and what they're willing to accept and how that gets reduced into writing. So yes, there are can be counter offers, there can be other things that you can add to it. One question that I get asked a lot is, if I sign an agreement and my employer doesn't honour it, what happens then? 
Now that's actually a really big question because if it's in a deed, for instance, then it could be breach of deed or breach of contract. Uh, if they're not honouring the, the dollar value, for instance, let's say you have agreed to separate your employment for a certain sum of monies and they refuse to pay, uh, then yeah, there could be a legal recourse for you and there could be a court action um, available to you. And actually vice versa, if you breach part of the deed, for instance, then your employer ha may have a right to sue you for that breach, depending on how the breach is and what the breach is. So if you do decide you're going to breach that deed of settlement and release or breach the agreement that you've signed with your employer, or if your employer has breached that agreement, then we would certainly encourage you to go and seek legal assistance because a lawyer will be able to give you advice about whether the breach is in a separate term, whether the breach is going to cause loss and whether you might have some uh, monetary damages or legal recourse there. Thank you very much for watching.